Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn. I am a business success strategist at Success on Your Own Terms. I work with female entrepreneurs and small business owners, and I help them work on their business and no longer in it. Today at the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, it is my pleasure to be talking to, conversing with, Heather Waring. Heather is, uh, had a former career, uh, was a former career advisor for Cosmopolitan magazine, a career columnist for the Sunday Express, a regular contributor to Glamour magazine, and a writer of syndicated column for the New Press Group. Heather is a certified coach who spent her early careers, career years in the not-for-profit sector before setting up her own business in 2000. In 2006, she introduced walking and coaching into her portfolio and embarked on a number of walking-related initiatives, which led to many charity walks and to training women for charity events. Walking is where her passion lies, and this is the vehicle she now uses for her work. And Heather has also been a member of the Athena Network for over 10 years. Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, Heather. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. I'm fantastic, thank you, and really glad to be here. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so tell us more about your story. So obviously I understand you've had a, obviously, reconverse, reconversion. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so tell us more about that. Well, in, um, in 2013, um, the end of September, I had been working far too hard and I knew that. So I kept telling myself that um, I was going to have a break soon and everything would be fine. Uh, now, if my break had been lying around the pool for nine days, then maybe that would have happened. But uh, there were other things that uh, were boiling up that I had to face. And what happened was I was walking a section of the very famous Camino de Santiago de Compostela. Yeah. And I was doing the section that goes from uh, France, Saint-Jean-de-Pied-de-Port in France, over the Pyrenees. Yeah. So it wasn't the easiest walk. You're familiar with this walk, Agnes? Yeah. It uh, wasn't the easiest walk. Uh, it was very cold at the top. Um, and when we got over the other side, it was pouring. And then two days later, the pendulum swung and we, had, we were walking in sort of high 30, early 40 degrees heat. So I wasn't sleeping. I was still enjoying it. I wasn't sleeping. And I came back absolutely exhausted. Mm -hmm. So the, the great break I thought I was going to have didn't happen. What happened was three days of crying. That's very unlike me. Those of you who know me, very unlike me. And I was crying. I didn't want to get dressed. Hadn't a clue what was going on in my life. Just knew I didn't care what happened. First of October, I read an article all about burnout. And I could tick every single thing on that. So it was tick, 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 tick. And I took it and I showed it to my husband. And he said... Well, at least we know what's happening. What are you going to do about it? Good point. Well, that was the start. <laughs> that was the start of a transformation. Wow. So from there. From there, what I did was I took some time off. Now, I'm a very highly energetic person. So after about a week, 10 days, I really wanted to jump back in there. And of course, what I realized was that that had been my practice in the past, I've had down times, I've had exhausted times. And what I did was I kind of took a couple of days off and then I jumped back in. So I kind of literally find myself sitting on my hands so that I wouldn't jump back in. Mm. And that, I knew something serious was going on here. And, and many, 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 probably many of the listeners here are kind of maybe thinking the same thing because they've maybe been in that kind of place. And I... I did some, some stuff looking into where I was, tried to get into some meditation, tried to quiet my mind. Um, and I was speaking at a conference in Canada in the December. And by December time, I was feeling a lot better. And I spoke about some work I'd been doing, um, helping my husband and a co-author with a book tour. 
And this was a very successful uh, talk that I did, a workshop that I ran. And at the end of it, lots of people were asking me, oh, will you do this for me? Will you do this for me? So, of course, the me who had been kind of lost in the wilderness a little bit and I didn't know why, thought, aha, maybe this is what I've meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. So I jumped into this, did it very successfully for about six to nine months, and then we'd been burgled and I'd lost my laptop and mm. with my laptop when we went to um bring all the um the backups back and reconnect they were all corrupt I think the universe actually oh, had... I love it when that happens <laughs> I've had things like that as well oh, on, on, a, on the first of January by the way oh. which was which was even better <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare for anyone who's had it and your whole world kind of or, or a gift well i think this is what the universe had in mind mm. for me. because what i realized was all the work for this new business had disappeared so it was it was rather like it hadn't even existed wow and i absolutely just fell apart again i wasn't in as bad a place as i'd been in the october but I wasn't in a great place and it was very interesting because a coach colleague of mine, a counseling colleague of mine and a cranial sacral therapist who I saw all within about a week of each other all said to me, Heather, there is no connection between your head and your body. You are completely disconnected. And I was in tears. I was in a mess. But actually, this was the greatest gift I was mm-hmm. ever given because this really pulled me up short. And I found myself thinking, okay, you tried before, you clearly didn't do it properly or at the depth you needed to tackle this. Mm-hmm. So now is my opportunity. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to build from there. Um, what I did was, the first thing I did was I just stopped. I just stopped things. I stopped work. I, I explained to people what was happening. I didn't have that much work at the time, but I explained to people what was happening. And of course, I was very nervous about this, but I think what most of us find, if we, I'm a great believer, and if you speak from your heart, you can't be wrong. People can, can disagree yeah. with you, but you're being true to yourself. Yeah. And when I spoke from my heart and explained what was happening, the responses from people were so supportive. You know you're not well, you have to get well, you've got to sort yourself out first, then you can actually get back to helping others. And so that took the pressure off, as you can imagine. Um, As I say, I stopped working. I started looking at what I could do to help me. And that was a real mix of starting to get into meditation. I'd tried before, but I started to take it a little bit more seriously. I, as you said in your introduction have a huge passion for walking so I started to get out there walking one of the things that happened was I was also diagnosed as adrenally fatigued and this diagnosis came about because I was having lots of aches and pains in my body what I've learned is the most amazing thing about adrenal fatigue is it that hits so many of us women especially in I different hear it ways. often I hear yeah. it very often so many, when, when I started talking about it, it was as if I'd given permission to others mm. to share their experiences too. Mm. And one of the things that I want to do down the, down the road this year, further down the road this year, is to interview a number of women who've had adrenal fatigue or think they might have it because I think we've got a hidden, a hidden epidemic out there. We have a lot of stressed women. We have a lot of disconnected, overwhelmed women who are following this kind of superwoman model of being there for their children. They're increasingly for their parents now, uh, parents, for their partners, for their jobs or careers, for their friends. And the only people they're not there for is themselves. And I could recognize of this so much in me. I just was not there for myself. And, but it's very hard when you've been used to being life's natural nurturer and mm-hmm. giving all this stuff away to everybody else. Very hard to get back and actually start to connect with how you put yourself first, yeah. how, you, how you give yourself. Um, 
And, and that's something that all these things I was doing were actually not speedy things. They were things I had to deal with step by step by step. And so I started walking again, but I could only do a very little because of all these aches yeah. and pains. I, I started the meditation again, small steps. I very much tuned into my body and this was very difficult because I was all in my head. Mm. I had to learn to really reconnect with my feelings, which I'd always thought I was quite a feelingy person. So this was a bit of a, a kind of a shock to me. <laughs> so um, and not something I really welcomed because I thought, hold on, this is making me think that everything who I was wasn't true anymore, you know. And, and again, I think the biggest, biggest, biggest thing is to be courageous. I had to be very courageous in admitting what was going on for me. It's very easy, isn't it, to kind of hide away, to put our head oh, in the sand. Of course. Yeah, to be a bit of an ostrich. Build, build that beautiful wall. <laughs> Absolutely. And this was not about building walls. This had to be about tearing those walls down. It's, yeah, exactly. That's, it absolutely when, I, when, I, when I said building walls, is that's what we've built. But then, of course, we need to get rid of it. Um, I, of I, course. There are so many parallels that I can, uh, with a completely different story, that I can hear in what you're saying. And what I, what I really love is how strongly you're pointing at the importance of what I call radical self-care. Mm -hmm. uh, you ha absolutely have to put yourself back at the center of your life mm -hmm. and connect to who you truly are. And it's only from that place of alignment that things will start falling into, uh, into place naturally without, without effort, in fact. But it is shaky because oh. it's, it's, it's all your certitudes, would you call that uh, like that yeah. in English, yes. um, that are falling apart. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and that and that is scary, uh, mm -hmm. but it is life changing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say to your listeners, you know, if you are identifying with any of this, please do stay and keep the faith and be strong. Because at one point, I thought I would never be the same person again. I thought I'd lost my bouncy, bright, kind of sparkly self. And, um, and you know, with some of the, the roller coasters that I went mm -hmm. through, it just seemed it would never come back. But actually, it can come back. <laughs> Obvious be obviously, <laughs> obviously, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> be strong. Stick with... So it's pain. It is absolute pain we're going through. And, and what is really important, too, is to have somebody... And as women, we're also very bad at asking for help. Mm. We're very good at giving help. Yeah. And, and sometimes when, when you're scared about asking for help, turn the tables and realize that when you, when you offer help to others, you really mean it. So if people are offering help to you, they're not just they, saying that, they they're really meaning it. They want to help. They want to be there. So accept the help and find yourself a couple of people, and, and they will often be female friends, who you trust completely, who you can really be yourself with, because you need you need that. I was I was also very lucky to be part of a, a group. I was working with a program called uh, One of Many Women and Lead the Change. And um, one of the aspects of that, the one that made the biggest difference to me, was a, a retreat called Be Love. And I actually that was that hit at one of my lowest possible times. I had got to a point of absolutely self-loathing myself. Mm -hmm. I could not look at myself in the mirror, especially when I didn't have any clothes on. Mm -hmm. I had put on a lot of weight because of the cortisol levels, because yep. of the, the, the adrenal fatigue. And everything, I, nothing I did could shift this weight. And of course, although it's, it's kind of superficial, we know that how we look on the outside really affects us inside Absolutely. and I just, I'm lucky I can dress quite well but I just did not feel good and when I went to this retreat I didn't want to go and the work that I did there with the other participants with the the questions with the meditations and visualizations had an absolutely amazing immediate effect to me I remember being able to stand and look in the mirror the next morning with, with I, when I just come out of the shower and I still didn't 100% like what I saw. I still wished I could be a couple of stone lighter. Mm -hmm. But I could appreciate this body who'd 
which had helped me give birth to my my daughter, which had allowed me to walk all the many miles that I walk. And and even to this day, I, I never went back from that. So it's these little steps. It's finding the support you can find. It's being honest about the biggest issues that you're facing. And one of the biggest issues for me, and, and I, it was very hard for me to admit this, was the fact that my husband, who I love to bits and who I have a great relationship with generally, was one of my biggest stressors. Mm. And that felt a real betrayal of him. But once I admitted that, no. I could then take some action and I could start to change things and I could have some of those difficult conversations, but with his commitment and his wish to see me better, yeah, yeah. we could work through that. So I'm just flagging up some of the issues that happened for me. And then bit by bit, I could see myself improving. I could see myself, I would find myself just being happier. I would find myself starting to get interested in, in thinking about work again and what I would do. And uh, a coach I was working with at the time, she said to me at one point, Heather, all the time I've known you, you've always wanted to walk. That's your passion. Mm -hmm. So will you stop finding all of these other things to do that you think you should do? Will you just be true to yourself and do your walking? And that was in about May last year. And again, that was, that I was definitely had reached again. That was a big, big thing for me. And I really took that connection um, as being something very powerful. And I, I just really then let go. That was the other thing. I learned to let go of so many things mm -hmm. that were holding on to me. Um, the year had coincided with my daughter getting ready to go to uni. She'd been in her, she was in her last year at school. And that's for a lot of parents listening to this. You oh, will recognize yeah. a difficult year. Yeah, stressful year. And I'd been with her, been able, been able to help her. And I decided that I didn't want to go back to work until I was, I had her settled at university and, and on this new life. And so although from about June, when I tested, not adrenally fatigued anymore. I could have gone back to work. I thought, no, let's have the summer. Let's have, let's give her a good summer. Let's get her settled. And in October, uh, end of September, she went to university. And on the 6th of October, I announced that I was back and I started work to launch my new website, uh, which is wearingwell.com. If you don't mind me saying that. Not at all. I was going to ask you anyway. <laughs> Just seemed a good place to bring it in. So it's www.wearingwell.com and the strap line is walk to the rhythm of your heart because I believe that walking is a great vehicle. It's a great health vehicle, but it's also a great discussion vehicle. It's a vehicle which I can offer meditation and um, um, mindfulness. It's been my sanity and it's helped me walk to the rhythm of my heart. And that's what I want to do now. I recognize that so many women out there are where I was and I don't want them to get as far as I got to. I don't want them to have that burnout. Yeah. I want to nip it in the bud and help them find who they truly are on their journey. Fantastic. I really love that. I will re rewind a little bit to point at a few things that you said so that uh, the viewers can uh, also take that in. Um, you did talk about um, not knowing, not being clear about uh, what it is that you needed to heal, if I can put it this way. Um, yeah. And you did mention this workshop that you did not want to go to. And, yeah. and clearly for the viewers, that usually is a hint. Uh, if you are resisting something, yeah. that's, that's where you need to go. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's the most challenging because obviously if, we, if we're resisting it, we really don't want to go there. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you should go there. So that yes. very, very clearly. Uh, the other very important thing you mentioned as all, uh, at all, uh, uh, sorry, also is uh, the fact to, to be asking for help um, mm -hmm. and finding that support. Um, I do remember that when I left my toxic relationship two years ago, um, I really felt lost and 
back then I was still living in France, but quite isolated geographically, etc. So I was more in a virtual world, but I clearly reached out. I said, Hey ladies, I need your help. Who, who can help me? And it's amazing. Uh, the number of reactions I got and uh, it was not only sympathy you know it was not only I mean it was some very practical tips I even had a coach who offered me six sessions of coaching out of the blue yeah. I mean it's it's amazing how women can support each other uh, so so do reach out and uh, what I find interesting in that process is that it also shows other women that they're not alone in their own journey Oh, totally. Because we, totally. we all have our things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that is really something that is absolutely very, very important. And then the, the piece about um, going slowly. Um, mm -hmm. I see so many of my clients wanting to reach that mountain. And, of course, they are overwhelmed because it's, <gasps> it, it looks so yeah. much. But just one step after the other in the right direction and, and mm -hmm. you, you will get there. Um, and and one percent plus one percent plus one percent is fifteen percent improvement. That's yeah. already much better than what you had. So um, yeah, I just wanted to recap yeah. those uh, those aspects. Ties in very nicely with I think it's the Chinese proverb that every journey every journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Exactly, and that's what it, it's a step by step approach. Yeah, one step absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and because it is a process, uh, you need to. Um, the, um, would digest be the right term? You need to, to you need to, to digest it, and that takes mm -hmm. time. You 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 can't eat the whole elephant in one go. No. So you need you need time to take it all in and um, yeah, adapt it to your life then and etc. Um, and so um, the the other thing that leads back to what we said at the very beginning is all about alignment. That's that's how you end up. Uh, that that's how you can combine your passion um, yeah. with what you're good at, and uh, it it all falls into place very 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 naturally. Yeah. Mm. And what what I'm doing now through the walking is it's completely in alignment with my values because my top value is health, mm. um, which of course is honouring, and my second value is freedom, which is also honouring. So you go down the list and it ticks every one. So yeah. yeah, that's a great place to be. So you're so right on the alignment. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting because I think it also leads to um, a form of, um, of faith. All of a sudden, you're, you're clear that everything falls into place anyway, uh, just by doing the things that are right for you. And, and those are the things that will help people who think like you to, to resonate with you. And that's how you will attract to yourself the right people, the people you yeah. want to work with. Yeah. 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 So, so talking about people you want to work with, uh, who are your ideal clients? My ideal clients are women who are feeling stressed, who are overwhelmed with life and, and who are disconnected, who haven't, who've kind of lost themselves. And all those things are just making them wonder what on earth the next step is and, mm -hmm. and what really their purpose or reason is. And, and what I do, what the main part of my work is, I take those women on trans transformational walking experiences. And in that, I give them the gift of space because I think for many women, and this is one of the reasons I actually physically take them away, is for many women, even if you're doing work with them on a kind of daily basis or weekly basis in their hometown, they're going home in the evening to, you know, dinner. what's for dinner tonight, yeah. Um, have to make beds, have to do this, have to, have to help with homework, have to check the parents, all of these things. Whereas by taking them away, what they do is they walk every day, so they're getting exercise. They're walking in lovely scenery because we do it in French, France or uh, Spain along the Camino often. They're, they've got a small group of other like-minded women. We're practicing mindfulness. We're talking about what we change. <laughs> We've also got the group impact, the small group impact a few times during the day of just, just touching base and helping, discussing, you know, feeding into each other. And of course, at the end of the week, they're not going to come away fixed. That's too, too short a time. That's not how but, it works. No, but what they will do is they'll come away feeling that they've had a break, they've had space, their head will be clearer, they'll hopefully have some more clarity, and they will have a plan as to how to go forward. 
you know, to actually start to make the changes that they want to make. Um, and I think that's really, really important. So it's interesting because I was about to ask you how long those um, journeys are, but you've answered it in the conversation by saying uh, after one week. Um, what I find very interesting in what you're describing is that all of that is leading to raising awareness and that makes so much of a difference too. Yeah. 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 And, and for many people, many women, they, they don't quite realize what's going on anyway. I mean, we, we're talking about women who are involved in a whole pile of different things who come from lots of different backgrounds. Some might have done a lot of personal development. Some might have done none. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's so many things that many women are not even probably aware of and, and perhaps don't realize they can have as much control over their lives if, if they should wish to have it, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and I, think, I think the um, the group setting is very beneficial also uh, you, you end up with in fact what you were saying about those who have done a lot of personal development those who haven't etc it's it's all coming back also to this mastermind type of approach and uh, mm. there's so much more in multiple heads than than in one only uh, but also coming back to what we said earlier sharing experiences and discovering that we're not the only one and, and that is so important mm. Yes. And, and, um, and that can make you feel so much better when you hear that you're not the only one. And of course, when you have shared this kind of experience with a small group of women, you come away with that support and, and the bonding mm -hmm. that means that those women having gone through what you've experienced can also be often in the best pos position to provide that help that we talked about earlier too. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's developing things that will help when you come home as well. Absolutely, absolutely. This is fantastic work that you're doing. I really uh, enjoy what I'm hearing. So we're nearing the end of our time together. Is there one or two or three, whatever tips that you would want to give to the listeners before we go? I think the, the, the tips that I want to give are really what I've said already, but I just want to reinforce them. It's, no, you're not alone. It's take things step by step. It's ask for help. And it's don't run away the first time things start to go bad again, because you've got to stay with it and see it through that slightly down time, because that's often the time where the breakthroughs happen. So stick with it and just you know, value yourself really mm -hmm. because you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be living a life that you enjoy. I like that uh, last point that you're mentioning. I always say to my clients, be gentle with yourself. You're a human being. So it's absolutely normal that you will get off track sometimes. Um, so don't beat yourself up, but instead ask yourself, what could you do differently so that you get on track again and that next time you stay on it longer? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Heather, this uh, really was a pleasure to, uh, to have you. Uh, for the viewers, if you too have uh, this dream that you want to realize or you're stuck at crossroads, you have this reinvention that you need to go through and want to go through but don't know where to start, uh, you can go to my website to book a complimentary discovery uh, consultation to find out how I can help you do the same. I've been there. I've bought quite a few t-shirts. Um, and so my website is www.anyesvanrijn.com and that is a n y e s v a n r h i j n dot com. Thank you again and talk to you at the other side. Thanks. Bye. Bye.